morning. Um, I'm a little under the weather today, also I had a fall, so I have some pain, so it might not be um, might not be my normal self, but a, a few things I want to talk about, maybe make more than one video about, actually. I, I, I don't live in, in Monroe, I don't even live in Orange County, it doesn't have very much to do with me, except for, yes, I, I, you know, I have connections there, very personal and family connections, including one of my children attend school there and so forth, so there's what, some interest to me, and of course, uh, the summer of seeing this is uh, uh, the, 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 the tomb of the Samarebbe is certainly a place of devotion for me personally. Um, <clears throat> and a place, place of pilgrimage. But uh, I was reading about the controversy over the split. Uh, between Monroe, the town of Monroe, and, and the village of Curious Joel seceding from the town and forming its new town. <coughs> and what exactly, uh, what exactly is behind it, and so forth. Now, to me, it doesn't matter one way or the other. But it just, uh, it's just so amazing how people want to have things both ways. I and mean, this is the same thing we see in East Ramapo. East Ramapo, everybody's like, you know, uh, we want the, basically, what's going on in East Ramapo is as follows public school families, they want the Jewish money, but they don't want the Jews to have the right to vote. And that's basically what America was founded on. No taxation without representation. I don't know if you remember that. I, I heard that they don't teach history in public school anymore or something like that. I don't know. I, I listen to a lot of talk radio. That's the kind of things I hear. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, although I, I, I've heard also that they start American history from Reconstruction as opposed to from Revolution, which is also quite quite shocking. Um, although quite well understood. Um, so I, I read some articles from a group, I think it's called Love Monroe, and they are saying, let's take a moment to, um, to contemplate what this is all about, the secession movement in Monroe, and whether it's good or bad, which I can understand, it makes sense to take time and uh, contemplate things. So one of the things that was stated was that you know if if Curious Joel's is, first of all there was stupid things they said like oh you know they want to give a name want to give the name Palm Tree, and Palm Tree, New York just sounds dumb. So I, you know, I, I don't know what business that is of anybody's, what kind of name. So they'll think of it if you want to suggest some other name. I, I originally heard they want to call it Sotmer. the Rebbe could say is officially the Rebbe of Sopmer, I don't know. It should be well. Um, and 
other things would have heard. Um, but uh, you know, another argument was that uh, all the Hasidim they'll still live in Monroe or have businesses in Monroe so we're not getting rid of them quote unquote which is uh, alright we can take what we want with that um But the uh, interesting thing, just on the side, there was some article I read, I don't remember the name, but they, they mentioned some person, a name that I never heard before, a Jewish-sounding name, was the founder of United Monroe, and everyone thought Emily Conveyor was the founder of United Monroe. You see, if someone with a Jewish name, and then again, that goes and proves what I've been saying all along, that all of these local uh, anti-Hasidic groups, in general, are Jewish. I mean, you know, in, in Bloomingburg, they're open about it, but in, in Monroe, they, uh, Jewish, I mean, non-Gentile, they're, you know, they're, they're not really Jewish if they're not if they're heretics, but they're they're not Gentiles either. They're <coughs> in that limbo state, which is of course the lowest rung. Uh, I mean, basically, Jew and Gentile are equal. There's no no problem being a Gentile. Nothing wrong with that. But to be a, a, a Jewish uh, apostate is, of course, you know, uh, total reprobate. Uh, but it's neither here nor there again. But but again, it's connected to all of these movements we've talked about, starting with the Sabbateans and the Frankists, and eventually going in general to what the left is in the West and, and has been for over a hundred years. And uh, you know, with all of these movements of communism and Zionism and so forth, they're all coming to undermine freedom as opposed to the founders of this country who were really founded in Torah in a, in a major way. Um, those who opposed it from the left, those who opposed freedom and so forth, um, and, and who are really just opposite. Now, again, that's neither here nor there. The thing which is just, you know, those other two things are, of course, more offensive, but also rather strange. But, but the most fascinating thing in this post, opposing or saying to reconsider the, um, the secession of called the town of Palm Tree, or some have suggested North Monroe, or different things, is that they are going to lose the tax revenue, meaning the town of Monroe is going to lose the tax revenue. Now everybody always says, oh, all these people are tax exempt. They don't pay taxes, they're not taxpayers, blah, 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 blah. So what if all of these people are quote unquote tax exempt like everybody claims? So then what what tax revenue are you losing? Obviously it's not true. <laughs> Obviously they do pay taxes. They pay taxes, you know, federal, state, county, town, and village taxes. They're paying more taxes because they're an incorporated village than they would if they were not an incorporated village. That's 
just how it is. And the fact of the matter is also that the percentage per capita tax exempt land in not just the village of KJ, but in general, the Hasidic owned areas is actually a, 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 in the town of Monroe and the surrounding areas is a lower percentage than the non Hasidic, and it's a lower percentage in general, meaning there are, you know, there are plenty of tax exempt um, land, but it, it's a small percentage. I think in KJ it's about 5%. And, oh, let's get this bug out of here. Oh, wow. I think he just went back into the window. I don't know. In KJ it's a... It's like 5% and the, and the rest of Monroe it's maybe 7 or 8%. So... Uh, Yes, there is land that is tax exempt, but it's very little. You know, I mean, I, I remember no, that's not what to talk about. How do I get past this truck? Again, it comes down to this question of no taxation without representation, meaning you don't want the quote-unquote block vote, so um, so so you can't have their money. I mean, that's just how it works. I mean. To me, again, I don't care one way or the other. If you want to keep the status quo, it's fine. If you want to secede, it's fine. To me, it makes more sense. Personally, the secession, but I really don't care. I don't think either side is anti-Semitic. Um, you know, and, and both sides claim the other side is anti-Semitic. I don't think either side is anti-Semitic. I think there is a certain anti-Hasidic element within both sides, but also there are fine people on both sides. You see what I did there? Um, but it's true. <laughs> it is true. And that maybe we'll go to our next um, to, a, to our next video. <coughs> but if there is secession, you know, some people are saying, well, what about separation of church and state? Now, first of all, even within, I'm pretty sure within KJ, there are non-Jews who live there. Certainly are non-Jews who work there. I believe there are non-Jews who live within the KJ village. It's a very small village. So there are plenty of areas that small throughout the country um, that probably don't have a single Jew. And certainly most areas that small within the country don't have a single Hasidic Jew. And so just stop, just plain, you know, saying you have to have diversity, that's nonsense. I mean, that's part of the, the progressive left-wing agenda <coughs> to, to um, you know, to, to have these artificial forms of diversity and things that really don't matter. We're all individuals. Human beings are human beings. Doesn't matter what religion, race, culture, anything you are. We're human beings, we're Americans, and that's what matters. But that being said, alright, so there'll be an overwhelming majority within the town, as there is now in the village, of people of a particular religion, also of a particular religious um, approach. Now, one thing I could say about it is this. About, in general, with the whole issue of religious freedom in KJ. The people who oppose 
KJ the most live in KJ. These are the faction that are often called the dissident faction. I don't know if that's an apt term, dissident. Um, but uh, th that's how they're usually labeled. And they oppose the existence of Curious Joel. They most strongly oppose the existence of the Curious Joel School District. Um, and it's their right to do so. But my point is that those people are if those people are allowed to have religious freedom in the village of KJ, as they do, they have their own synagogues, they're not denied permits, although there have been uh, skirmishes, and there have been issues with, you know, uh, disputes about ownership of the congregational areas and so forth. And, and, and there's apt arguments on both sides, and, it, and it's sad that there should be an argument that really shouldn't be, but on the other hand, this is America, and you're free to have different ideas. But that being said, if there were a group that sought to build a church or a mosque, or a Buddhist temple, or whatever, within the village of KJ, there would be no opposition to it, because the, there would be much stronger opposition from the quote-unquote powers that be to the other factions within KJ. The same thing if the Belzer Hasidim wanted to open up a, 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 a shul, meaning but they live there, they don't live there. So, you know, a shul is much less likely because you don't have the population and, and you know, the Yosh of Shabbos and so forth. Well, let's say, I don't know, within the, the new town, the Reformed Jews want to open the temple. There is a Reformed temple in Monroe, not too far from KJ, um, as well as a conservative temple a little bit further away within the town of Monroe. Um, but if within the new village there would be, <clears throat> there would be no way to stop it, and there would be, as long, you know, they bought the land that they want to, there's no, there's no issue with that, there's, and there's really no, <clears throat> they really don't care, it's not, you know, that's, meaning if, if these quote-unquote dissident groups or, or the opposing groups, um, they all have their synagogues and everything, in the village, maybe they have their schools outside, but they also have schools inside, you know, and, and this and that. So it's, um, it's really neither here nor there. That That's a moot point, this, um, the religious issue. It, w it would be if, if there is, if there were interest in such a thing, um, there would be no issue with that. But this whole story of, well, quote unquote, losing the tax revenue, it's, to me, it's quite fascinating because it's like, well, which do you want? You gotta pick one or the other. You can't, you can't say, in this case, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I mean, you can't say, it's the same story in East Ramapo. You can't say, want their money, but that we don't want them to have the right to vote for who they want. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, with the, uh, with, uh, within K KJ, the various factions. It, everyone has a right to vote how they wish, and, and that's just how it is. Um, and, and there's all kinds of 
propaganda one or the other and claims of this and that that's not here what to, to discuss and I'm, these things are just silly for the most part but <clears throat> as far as these issues are concerned, it's, um, it's just shocking to me that that's what, you know, it comes down to, oh, well, we're going to lose the tax revenue. Well, the loss of the tax revenue is also equal to loss of population, meaning you'll have less revenue, but you, you would assume you have less expenses. I mean, it's the same, the same story with the, with the school district. Um, excuse me. And, but to me, ultimately, it does make sense for there to be the secession, just as it makes sense for, I feel, East Ramapo to follow the KJ model of secession. This way, um, you know, we don't have you know it, it, it's no taxation without representation and it is ultimately that great American value of federalism and self-government so, you know, that's why New York State has villages to, you know, even though I know a lot of progressives oppose the existence of village governments in New York State um, and would like to eliminate the village system. Um, but it makes sense to have the village system and also this, the, um, the town, to, for the towns to have the freedom to divide when you have, you know, very different uh, ideas. I mean, it's funny, where I live, even though it wasn't a split in the government, but why is there two post offices? Meaning, there's one post office for the whole town of Monroe, including Curious Joel. They don't have their own post office. Uh, passing not too far from Curious Joel now, coming near to the town of Monroe, uh, as I'm driving now. Um, and, uh, and again, excuse me if I'm pausing because I have some pain fall yesterday. But where I live, you have within a very small radius about four or five post offices. You have um, where, I, where I live is Kanyanga Lake and then you have White Lake which is like a mile away the post office. They're basically the same area. Um, you have Manga Valley and Bethel and then areas that we would think are Bethel uh, get their mail delivered by Swan Lake. Um, which is in the town of Liberty, it's in a different town. So, like, there's all these weird things as far as the Postal Service, but specifically, uh, White Lake and Kanyanga Lake were divided because of differences in culture uh, between the two areas. Originally, they used to call Kanyanga Lake used to be called North White Lake. And I, I don't mean to get into that history, but in, in a certain sense, it, it, North White Lake was the more wholesome side, um, as opposed to like the 17B side was, I don't know, run by organized crime or something like, I don't know, that's the, that's the legend I hear, I don't really believe it. Um, I mean, there are all different kinds of legends about organized crime in the Catskills and using the lakes, whether it was White Lake or Lafayette Drake or so forth, for, uh, 
to dispose of bodies and things like that. I don't know. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but there, there wasn't a split in the government. It's all the town of Bethel. There are no villages in the town of Bethel. Um, you know, there's a, you know, Jeffersonville is near the border, but that's the town of Calicoon. Uh, so whatever it is. Uh, and Calicoon is not in the town of Calicoon. Calicoon is in the town of Delaware. This is all these interesting uh, things in Sullivan County where I live, but uh, now I'm in the town of Monroe, <coughs> but I, um, I, I could see both sides of this issue, although it makes more sense to me to have secession. Um, that uh, you guys do what you want, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely, it's nice to have a right to vote and figure these things out. And although some folks say you shouldn't vote until you're informed. All right. That's why you have different forums to discuss these issues. And one way or the other, I don't know. So I'm just putting in my two cents. I don't have time to go to meetings and things like that. And I really don't care that much. Uh, but I just wanted to say something about it. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe and comment. Um, and I'd like to continue the conversation. Thank you for watching.